Italy, a magnificent country. It's all here. It's quite breathtaking. A place where I feel deeply connected. This is where my grandmother Polizzi's journey began. In this series, I'm returning, but I'm leaving the mainland to explore Italy's extraordinary islands. So beautiful. Revisiting memories. I haven't been here since I was a child, and I thought I'd make a pilgrimage. And building new ones. I mean, this is one of the maddest things I've ever done. Feels like a once-in-a-lifetime experience. On a journey of discovery, from the ancient, rugged beauty of Sardinia, the remains here are spine-tingling, to the splendor and surprises of Sicily, and some of the Mediterranean's hidden treasures. It does just feel a million miles away from anywhere else. <laughs> Look. At this. It's one of Sicily's most striking secrets. I can't believe it, it's been too long. This is my Italian island adventure. My island odyssey has reached its final leg, the south of Sicily. To me, the most untouched region of Sicily. Its coasts are wild and beaches deserted. The mountainous landscape is peppered with olive and almond groves. I'll be admiring the beauty of its famous Baroque towns before heading to the Real Monte coast to explore a fascinating industry. And I'll be going offshore to the exotic island of Pantelleria before ending my trip at southern Sicily's most northeastern point for a seafaring fiesta. For the traveller looking to explore Sicily's diverse history, this region delivers. I am particularly fond of this part of Sicily because of the impact that you see that culture after culture has left, from the Norman churches to Baroque palazzi. It's all here. It's quite breathtaking. I can still remember my surprise when visiting in my 20s at how accessible some of its stunning remains were. I'm at the Valley of the Temples in Agrigento. There are three temples in a line across this valley, and it's one of the most important sites in Sicily. And the remains here are, are spine-tingling. It's rather strange, I'm sure, to some people that you can find better ruins here than you can in Greece. It's changed somewhat because 15 years ago, I could still clamber all over it. You could pick up bits of column wherever you went. But look, it's amazingly complete. I'm so excited to be back here in southern Sicily. I can't believe it, it's been too long. The South is a region that begs to be explored. I had some great times travelling with a friend. I don't think there's anywhere in Europe with such a rich fabric as there is here. We hired a car and just drove and drove. On a £20 budget, we lived and ate like kings, and I remember being particularly struck by the beautiful honey-hued architecture all around me. A wonderful starting point is Ortigia, a perfect jewel of an island within the ancient city of Syracuse. There is no better time to take in its beauty than when day breaks. This is what one comes to Italy for. I defy anybody, anybody, not to have their breath taken away by this in this light with the swallows above my head. It's just perfect. There is something jaw-dropping about the particularly flamboyant nature of this southern Sicilian Baroque. What it has is this kind of patrimony 
which is unlike anywhere else. And that is why I keep coming back. Less than an hour south of the international airport of Catania, you'll find the heart of Sicilian Baroque, a cluster of stunning towns that were all rebuilt in a simultaneous wave after a devastating earthquake. The elegant streets of Norto are a sight to behold. But the historic town of Ragusa offers even more. Here you can discover an almost forgotten highlight of this region. At a shop in the historic center, I'm meeting some of the women who still cherish a craft that's been passed down through the generations since the 14th century. Sono Alex Polizzi. Piacere. Piacere. A unique form of embroidery. One where you have no idea of the skill required. I'm in Ragusa with Maria to see one special technique, which is called sfilato siciliano, that is really only done here, of pulled linen threads. It's a tradition that's all but died out and that Maria has been trying to re-establish over the last 18 years. Allora, questo è un esempio del sfilato siciliano. Questa è una tovaglia da tavola per 12. Una volta ci mettevano i regali della sposa. Sfilato Siciliano was once an essential skill that was taught to girls from a young age. Che poi prima lo facevano le ragazze che erano nell'istituto le orfanelle e poi man mano hanno imparato tutte le donne ragusane. Questo adesso... era un lavoro che facevo, cioè è stato un bellissimo indotto per Ragusa. I love this. It really really reminds me of my nonna Polizzi who was incredibly proud of her bits and bobs. Owning a piece of this intricate thread work is like owning a piece of art. Lentolino baby. Royal baby, yes. <laughs> this is for a baby's bed, a sheet and a pillowcase for a royal baby. bello. <laughs> It's a craft for the more patient among us. Quanto, per quanto tempo vuole una lavorazione tale? Allora, noi c'è un anno di tempo ci vuole. Ma non perché si lavora tutti i giorni messi lì, perché è pesante. Tre ore al giorno si può fare qua. E poi adesso si fa per il piacere di avere una cosa bella. Sì. To Maria, this is second nature. But to me, this delicate embroidery is just baffling. So that bit of paper is a design, which is then drawn onto this. I non capisco come ancora. Questo non è facile. No, per questo il problema. Non solo capire come. E certo. Allora. Questo è il disegno, vede? I questo è sfilato. È sfilato. I sort of understand how on earth it happens. Forbice. E questa è algo grande. Sì. Si tagliano dei fili, contate. Contate. Quattro le lascio e tre le taglio. Sì. Oh my Così. God. Ed eseguo il disegno. Che concentrazione. Ma io non avrei mai la pazienza. This was a pastime after your housework was done. Just think on that. <laughs> yeah. un altro mondo. So what you're doing is knotting the three, the four threads, the three threads. <laughs> like, honestly, it's made me go cross-eyed just looking at it. Mamma mia, non si riesco neanche a guardare, neanche, ma... E perché ha voluto sapere come fare questo lavoro? Perché mi è sempre piaciuto il, il lavoro dello sfilato siciliano, i lavori mi sono sempre piaciuti. E poi anche perché è una, una tradizione della nostra terra, quindi è un peccato che vada persa. I don't think this is a profession for me. I mean, world famous lack of patience I have. I take my hat off to Maria. Devi essere un po' so she says you've got to be a bit, <laughs> bit touched. 
to do this work. <laughs> Un po' toccata. <laughs> Ma ci vuole invece molta intelligenza, sì, molta invece. intelligenza. bisogna contare, Cara. creare, molto creativa. I thought Maria was astonishing. She's so full of energy and she's so enthusiastic. It is an incredibly beautiful craft and it'd be tragic if it died out. I'm bidding a hasty retreat, but in truth, I'm in no hurry to leave this beautiful town because next I have to go deep underground if I'm to discover Sicily's most spectacular secret. I've made it to the southern shores of Real Monte, where there is a natural phenomenon that has to be seen to be believed, the Scala dei Turchi. These are the Turkish steps. Never seen them before, aren't they? Amazing. I mean, it's so beautiful. I've never seen anything like this anywhere in the world. Just amazing. Oh, I'm so lucky to be here. The so-called Turkish steppes derived their name from a time when Arab pirates moored their boats here while they invaded the local towns. They are formed from a blinding white sedimentary rock that cascades down to the sea. Even nature in this part of the world conspires to make you feel completely and utterly bewitched. It's one of Sicily's most striking secrets. Today, locals and tourists will spend the day luxuriating on these striking white rocks. Not me. I'm interested in what lies beneath. For here in Real Monte, the intrepid explorer can go on a journey deep underground. I'm about to enter a subterranean salt mine, and I'm starting to doubt my sense of adventure. I'm not brilliant at underground. I'm a bit nervous about whether I'm going to feel claustrophobic. I hope it's interesting enough to distract me. Luckily, I have Calogero, the boss here, as my guide and protector. Here we go. This is well and truly off the beaten track of most visitors. to a depth of 350 metres. And I'm actually feeling quite anxious. Quanto, quanto sale estratte ogni anno? Ogni anno abbiamo una media di circa un milione di tonnellate. My gosh, my gosh. It's a quantity put into context when you consider that the salt has existed here for six million years. Quando lo stretto di Gibraltar si chiuse, quindi il Mediterraneo non aveva più collegamento con acqua fresca dell'oceano. Sì. Quindi diventò un grossissimo bacino, sì. non avendo apporto di acqua fresca sì. da parte dell'oceano, cominciò a evaporare. This salt is what was left behind. Six million years. The roads we were driving through now are created by the gradual extraction of the salt. They literally have scraped it off the walls, creating these huge tunnels. It's amazing that this is a kind of a product that was just deposited so many years ago and that it's still going. Um, C'è ancora, ancora abbastanza sale per quanti, per quanti anni? Allora, se... Noi abbiamo valutato con eh, dei sondaggi esterni. Sì. Eh, che ancora ci sono da tirare fuori eh, 540 milioni di tonnellate. <ride> Mamma mia! Questo è vero. Ma allora è un deposito... Abbiamo... Ma... È un deposito eh, grossissimo, uno dei più grossi che possa esistere in Europa. There's a lot of salt here. There are more than 100 kilometers of ghostly tunnels in this subterranean wonderland. Very impressive. This mine produces salt for gritting roads across Europe and America. Oh my God, mamma mia. 
It's a resource that's constantly in demand and keeps the machines here busy. It's an amazingly impressive operation. This is a bit of the salt as it's extracted. You can really taste the salt in your mouth, but it's very odd. It's also realistically, you're working with machines. There doesn't seem to be any fresh air down here. You have to keep as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty tough to work down here. I'd hate it. But apparently, there are some benefits to being among so much salt. Però va bene alle vie respiratorie. Ah, sì, no, non sapevo. È come. Amidst the grit and chaos of this mine and its machinery, I discover something really quite magical. Here, in the depths of this mine, you can come to worship in a cathedral of salt. It's one of only two subterranean cathedrals in the world. Look at that. That's wonderful. Look at these wonderful carvings. The Holy Family, but my definite favorite is the crucified Christ. Made by the salt miners, carved by the salt miners for their devotions. It's been created as a haven of safety for the miners in an otherwise perilous place. I can imagine that these men working underground find some comfort here because it is a very strange environment in which to be working and one that I certainly wouldn't be able to handle. But I am staggered by the scale of it by the facts and figures that have been given to me. It's an incredibly impressive operation and, uh, and one I won't forget in a hurry. I can't pretend I'm not glad to be above ground, but caked in salt, I'm in need of some rejuvenation. Just half an hour's drive further along the coast, heading west, is one of my uncle Rockhorse hotels and it would be remiss of me to come all this way and drive straight past. The salt mine was an experience, one I'm unlikely to repeat, um, and I'm glad to have had it, but my goodness, I'm much happier to be here now, with the sea and all this green around me. This island has traditionally not been rich in anything except for the amazing produce that there is here. The weather provides perfect growing conditions for almost everything. And so people might have been poor, but they always ate well. It was the main appeal for my uncle, who chose this part of the island to build a luxury hotel. Here at Verdura, which commonly means vegetable, you can't fail to feel the connection with Sicily's roots and particularly the land. It's like its own little province here. It's bigger than Monaco. And even the agricultural area is pretty impressive. It's over 2,600 square meters. There's over 3,000 orange trees, over 2,000 olive trees, 50 lemon trees. There's masses of produce that you can eat, literally, as soon as it's picked. The coastline is the other big draw here. Southern Sicily has miles of lonely, slightly windswept, sandy beaches. It feels very raw in a way, and it's quite hard to think that actually we're in a very populated part of Western Europe. It feels like we're further away than that. 
you can smell, there's a very strong smell of seaweed, and that is because this is one of the few spots where there's this miraculous stuff called Posidonia, which helps clean the oceans. It releases oxygen. This is one of the cleanest parts of the sea in Sicily. The resort also celebrates one of Sicily's oldest and most colorful exports, ceramics. Because this island mines clay of the finest quality, sculpting is an ancient tradition with roots that date back to 1200. Today, artisan sculptors continue to produce an array of work, from tiles to traditional trinkets. But what I love is how the pieces tell the agricultural story of this region. So, this is a very traditional looking design, and it's traditional um, because of what it depicts, which are the lemon and the pomegranate. And the pomegranate in particular is a sign of prosperity, which is why it's so popular to put up in a house. I love Sicilian ceramics. Marcus is always telling me off because every time I come to this part of the world, I always, always buy something, and he has to cart it back, handheld on the plane. I have bowls of every shape and size. I must have 40 in my house. Alberto has been sculpting intricate figurines like these for over 50 years. He's making a drunkard. Um, and you can see he's got a, fl a flacon in one hand and a jug in the other. He looks like I felt last night. <laughs> <laughs> Questo è un lavoro molto particolare perché lo fai a occhio. Sì, a livello artigianale, tutto ad occhio, senza progettazione, abbiamo tutto nella mente. Sì, una volta si usavano fare tutto a stampo. Oggi noi abbiamo un cinquantenne di esperienza di, di queste statuette fatte a sfoglia, diciamo. Sì. Colare in tutto il mondo queste statuette così, fatte così. Infatti vediamo quelli finiti. Carino lui! Ecco. Queste si possono Molto carino. rubare per i presepi. He's really skilled and it is admirable. I love it. Sadly, I won't be able to add to my collection because next I'm going offshore to a remote and mysterious island closer to Africa than Europe, Pantelleria. As I edge ever closer to the foreign shores of Tunisia, Sicily's largest offshore island lies waiting to be discovered, the black pearl of the Mediterranean, Pantelleria. It's a short flight or a ferry journey away from Sicily, but here the magical grottos and lava stone terrain feels like another world. Strikingly, this is the windiest island of the Mediterranean. Once a volcano that blew over 600,000 years ago, nature has kept the upper hand here ever since, as I'm about to discover. I've come to one of the island's vineyards, Donna Fugata, to meet owner Jose on an intensely blustery day. Hi, Alex, how are you? <laughs> Thank welcome you to so Donna Fugata and right. welcome to Pantelleria. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you so much Thank for inviting you. A tour of this vineyard is not only a great way to soak up some culture, but will also open your eyes to the particular quirks of living here. Pantelleria, where Europe meets Africa. Unbelievably, agriculture thrives on this dry, windswept island. I've arrived on a very, very windy day. Is it often like this? Well, of course, Pantelleria is the island of the wind. It's very strong wind and very uh, constant during the year. It's one of the most uh, striking elements of the microclimate of the island. Over the centuries, the farmers have managed to adapt to the extremities by creating a unique form of training the vines and bushes. The farmer on Pantelleria Island need to protect the vine, the olive trees, from the wind. So as for the vine, it decided to, to dig a hole in the soil 
so to um, cultivate the plant as a bush very low with the branches resting on the floor mm. in a horizontal way it's very very creative and typical of the island so you never let them get very high you prune them so they stay low so they escape the worst effects of the wind exactly this method of training vines has been recognized by UNESCO. That must be rather unique. This is great. This is great <laughs> because it is the first time in the, in the, in the history that UNESCO recognized um, world heritage, a rural and agricultural practice, the way you train a vine. The distinctive lava stone plays a vital role here too. Mile upon mile of terracing not only protects the produce from the buffeting breeze, its crevices trap moisture from nighttime dew, giving the plants a valuable water source during the day. This clever system makes it possible to grow everything from capers to citrus fruits. It's just uh, incredible because from the outside you see a fortress. Yeah. And you say, what's going to be inside? Just a tree? <laughs> This is the only way you can grow uh, citrus fruit on this windy God. island. The only way. It's so clever. It's very clever. So healthy. So healthy, very green, you see. Very deep green, so it's in perfect condition. But the real star of this 168-acre vineyard is a special type of grape variety which flourishes here called Zibibbo. Some of the vines here are over a century old. The wine produced from them is world-renowned. Zibibo is a type of muscat, and Zibibo, in this special condition, give great results in terms of uh, aromas. I'm dying to try some wine. <laughs> <laughs> I've been invited to join the rest of the team who work here for lunch along with a spot of wine tasting. I'm about to try Donna Fugata's most celebrated wine, Ben Rie. The production that goes into this wine means that it doesn't come cheap. A bottle of this prestigious tipple will cost around 30 pounds. Ben Rie is a wine made from dried grapes. So not only fresh grapes. You, you smell the Ben Rie and you feel Wow, I am on Pantelleria Island. I am in Sicily. I am in the Mediterranean Sea. And now let's have a sip. And now you have maybe something more intense. Hmm? I just can't. I mean, honestly, I can't get over the color. <laughs> It's seducting. I found all your wines seductive. I, they're wonderful. <laughs> they are so nice. Thank you. The precious Zibibo grape was an Arab import, one of many southern influences that have endured here ever since their invasion in the 8th century. Pantelleria's houses are another. Known as Damuzi, many of these single-storey lava stone dwellings have become quirky holiday homes. And this persistent wind blowing up from the Sahara, its original Arabic name, Bin Talrion, means daughter of the wind. Today, it's so windy that they've shut the airport. Luckily, I can seek shelter with a dear friend of mine. Flavio Albanese is a world-famous architect who, along with other stars like Armani and Madonna, is drawn to this enigmatic island, despite its extreme weather. Ciao! Hello. Ciao. 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 I'm so pleased to be here. Nice to see you here. Thank you very much for inviting me. You've never been? Never been. Great. Never so. been to Pantelleria, and after all these years, I've never been to your house. As I fully expected, Flavio's home is extraordinary the heart of which dates back to the 18th century. It's evolved from the traditional one-room layout into a sprawling 28-bedroom retreat. But the real feature of this house is the purpose-built living room. 
I love this room. I built it because I didn't find an existing room large enough to have like 10 people on the winter time. So I would like to have a fireplace and a place where we stay all together. So I have to build it. It's the place where we usually stay when it's like today, windy, Darling, windy day. It's not just windy, it's that, I mean, it's, <laughs> I feel battered by the wind today. Is I it know. always like this? No, I know it's a windy island. Well, it's a windy island, it's unusual for the June, but it's okay. What made you fall in love with this island so much? What is it that attracts you to well, the island? Well, the sea's unbelievable. Yeah. It's not, you know, the, the, the postcard sea. Yeah. It's very deep and blue. Yeah. No sand. So you can stay at 29, 30 meters deeper and you see completely clear to the top. Yeah, lovely. And uh, the island is beautiful inside. It's not a beach island. So. Yeah. People, it's nice. Local people is very nice. Very charming. It's a small island You're in the middle of nowhere, so it's, it pay attention to the guests. And I love the, island, the people of the island. Yeah. So you know, everybody knows me here. This ferocious wind has left me stranded here tonight, so I'm getting an unscheduled taste of Flavio's legendary hospitality. On the menu is a signature dish of Pantelleria, homemade by islander Emilia. Mason. Yes, I would love you to serve me. I'm starving. Thanks, darling. Is this a traditional dish? It's a traditional dish. Basta. We call ravioli panteschi. Basta. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Mm, the smell of the mint. It's very strong, the mint. It's it is lovely. Strong. So what do you think about the island? Mm, but you know what? It's got a very harsh beauty. It takes a moment to get your eye oriented. It's not a picture postcard kind yeah, of no, place. No, 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 no. You have to feel it, don't you? Yeah. Well, Thanks. toast. Thanks, my darling. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thanks Good for the here. invitation. Pantelleria does leave a lasting impression, and I can't believe it's taken me so long to come and experience it. But tomorrow, it's back to Sicily, where it's fiesta time. I'm back in Sicily, where the final moments of my journey take me to a place near the city of Trapani that's remained a secret to most tourists. I'm at San Vito Lo Capo, which is the northwestern tip of Sicily. It's a traditional fishing village, and it still stayed that. It's absolutely lovely. What a lovely place to end. They call this the Caribbean of Italy because of its soft white sand and clear blue seas. But in truth, it feels more African than anything else. There's only one road that comes in and out of this place. Maybe that's why it's so unspoiled. San Vito isn't just aesthetically African. The local dish enjoyed here may come as a surprise. Couscous is the traditional food here, and that is because the fishermen from here used to go and fish in Africa. It's come here, but it's never spread much beyond San Vito, and yet it's yet another thing that makes this place feel more like Africa than Italy. But this is couscous like I've never had it before. It's made with almonds, parsley, garlic, onion, cinnamon, and flakes of the local fish. Tana. It comes with its own broth, which tastes absolutely delicious. Mm. Which I meant to pour over the couscous. I'm longing to try it. Delicious. Mmm. I've never had couscous, never had couscous in Italy like this before. I've never really had couscous like this anywhere. It's fantastic. But the real charm of San Vito is its enduring reputation as a fishing village. This troubled industry has weathered widespread problems over the years, and San Vito hasn't escaped these. 
But small fishing businesses have and do still thrive here, partly because of a long-held passion, but also because of the efforts of a local cooperative run by Antonina Napoli. Mi fa molta impressione che ci sono ancora pescatori qui, quando so che in alcuni, tanti altri posti, la pesca più o meno non esiste più commercialmente. Com'è stato possibile? È stato possibile perché San Vito è fondamentalmente un paese di, di pescatori, quindi questa tradizione che ha delle origini antichissime ancora oggi si eh, tramanda di padre in figlio e pur essendo perché pur essendoci le difficoltà loro cercano di, di non arrendersi perché è una tradizione che non vogliono fare sparire. C'è un legame viscerale con il mare. Ecco. That's very nice. What is amazing is that you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds are still trying to undergo their apprenticeships, let's say. They still have a real pull to the sea. They're determined not to give up, even with all the difficulties that exist. It's clear to me that, for the men and women of this village, there is no alternative to fishing. It's a tradition that's ingrained in the locals. Franco is one of the fishermen who felt the pull of the sea here. Franco. Hi. Oh, hello. I'm Alex. I'm Frank. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're a fisherman. I'm a fisherman, like there's people here. We're all fishermen here. <laughs> Born in San Vito, Franco's family moved to America when he was a child. But he returned for a family occasion and has stayed ever since. How many fishermen are there still here in San Vito? In San Vito, I think um, maybe 100. Gosh, that's a lot. Yeah. My relatives, they were fishermen. And yeah. I have the fishermen in my blood because when I was in America all the time, I think about fishing. And I went to fishing too in uh, Monterey, California, in Canada. Then, when I see San Vito, the first thing I, that I say to my father, Father, Papa, my life is here in San Vito. I'm going to stay here. I love this place. I really love this place. It's really beautiful. I, I, I go around the world, but for me, it's one of the best uh, places to live. It's really nice. It is lovely. Yeah. Today, though, the sea is alive with activity of a very different kind. The sea is stunning, and I'm going to finish with the festa. I'm lucky enough to be here during the town's annual celebration of its fishermen and its namesake, San Vito. I'm told it's quite an occasion. An opportunity for the locals to relax and indulge in a few peculiar traditions. that guy got it in the end because it really didn't look to me like he was going to. It was more luck than judgment, at least that's the way it looked to me. Really good fun. Everyone's having a lovely time. I mean, what's not to enjoy, right? As the sun begins to disappear behind the mountains, the real heart of the festival begins as dozens of boats, including Franco's, take to the sea. In a rather chaotic procession in honor of San Vito, it could only be Italy. What a laugh. I love it here. I love how friendly everyone is. I love the community spirit. You saw it this afternoon when they were doing the greasy pole. And now look at this. Every boat is on the water. Uh, quite a flotilla here. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Italians know how to have fun better than any other nation I know. I might be wrong, but you'll have to prove it to me. Viva San Domingo! They certainly know how to throw a festa, don't they? I've been told to expect the unexpected. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 
there's a young boy who represents San Vito, who's holding the palm leaf, and is with a bearded guy in an older woman. I can only assume that it's fair. <laughs> I don't know really what's going on, but I know we're heading ashore. And we're, heading, we're heading ashore to a cacophony of horns and a number of flares being let off to the adoring crowd. This is always how I should arrive everywhere. <laughs> Look at all those people on the seafront. It's unbelievable. Look, there's a good couple of thousand people there waiting for some people to step ashore. I love Italy. I love Italy every time I come to an event like this. I think there's not a more generous, fun-loving, kind of chilled out, relaxed place in the world. They have their traditions and they stick to them, but they know how to do them really well. And to finish like this, who could want anything more? It's been more of an adventure than I could ever have imagined. It's absolutely stunning. It's amazing. The most weird thing I've ever seen. And it's reinforced my belief that you can never visit one Italian island and think you've seen them all. I mean, it's so beautiful. This is what one comes to Italy for. Everywhere I've been has felt unique. It feels like the outer edge of the known world. Here there'd be dragons. I've been to the most beautiful, breathtaking places. This is what I call a ballroom. I want to party in here. <laughs> Meeting so many fascinating and friendly people. Wow. Wow, I'm <laughs> glad to meet you. But the one enduring trait that I felt is their passion and strong, independent spirit. Please, what a charmer he is. He's an example to all of us. Grazie, grazie. There's a real community here, and they're all incredibly proud of their island. <laughs> it's a trip of a lifetime. Italy has done me proud. I still love this place and I still think it's got something that nowhere else I've ever been in the world can touch. <laughs>